Right, this one's going to be somewhat slightly different to my normal videos on my channel. Okay, uh, this is kind of what I get up to almost on a day to day basis, uh, just using the cameras which I've got and some of the highlights, let's say, of what I did on this particular day. I'll tell you, it'll be a month of Sundays doing that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right, so I've got to change the fuel filter. Right. So, I tend to do my own car maintenance as and when I can. Right, we're looking for a pair of pliers. Oh, there we go. Perfecto. There we go, that's one open. There we go. In the man cave area. Right. Get the right size one now, haven't I? Don't lose the screw, Andrew. That's both of the um, pipes off. Now it's just a matter of moving it out. Okay. Okay, right, so it's just a straight swap then, isn't it? That's what it is. Take the plug out of that. But this sensor, I guess that's what it is in there. And then we're gonna press it down, I suppose. I'll get in there like that. Take this one out. I'll stick that over there for now. Put that one in there like that. Take off the a little dust caps first I think the electrics this must be some kind of a sensor or something just flicks in just clicks in and the fuel line then goes in like that and then this one goes in like that there we go that's that one done and this one here Let's try it. No leaks. guys all good I've driven about 35 minutes from Swindon is about 18 19 miles I left my car here it's getting MOT'd at the moment it's getting tested uh, so I've left it in the workshop I've got about an hour uh, to spare I'm in the uh, small Oxfordshire town of Wantage um, but situated kind of between Swindon and Oxford but closer to Swindon uh, this is the birthplace of King Alfred. There we go. Some information here. I've been here before several times. Alfred the Great, the West Saxon King, born at Wantage, AD 849. Uh, so there's a big statue of him there. 
uh, was born here, 849 AD. Uh, there is a kind of a castle in a loose sense, more of a fort, which is about about a 25 minute, 20 minute drive from here going towards Swindon called Alfred's Castle. Now, did he live there? Did he stay there? Who knows? I don't know, but it makes a good legend. <laughs> Still not recognised. Hello, mate. How are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> I'm okay. How I just, you? yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I just got, got my car, I'm getting my car MOT down at the uh, garage there. All right. There is a small museum uh, just opposite the church. Um, and uh, there's some information in there, obviously, being a museum, uh, about King Alfred. I was here a few months ago trying to find the actual birthplace of King Alfred and I couldn't, uh, for the life of me, get any information at all. It's very sparse information on the internet about King Alfred. Alfred the Great, he was the only king to be called the Great, so uh, apart from Alexander the Great, it wasn't great at all, by the way. This is the v and uh, Vale and Downland Museum Wantage. So it's uh, free to get into, but they do like donations. Have a little wander around that in a moment. Uh, but in the meantime, I think um, the sky beckons. fly around, give you an idea of my uh, location in Wantage. Uh, John Betjeman there is uh, kind of looking up. What what he can see? Uh, let's go and find out, shall we? So what I'm trying to do today actually, obviously doing some history about Wantage, uh, the birthplace of King Alfred. Uh, this is the, the King Alfred room, um, it tells you a bit about the Anglo-Saxons and the Vikings, the ongoing battle, here's a picture of mostly England. Uh, Wessex, it kind of expanded and contracted depending who they were fighting and and sort of who they sort of won against. So when King Alfred was here, Britain was being invaded by several different groups of people, one being obviously the Vikings, which came from Northumbria. Well, they come from Denmark and they landed at a place called Lindisfarne, which is Holy Island, which is right up on the north and the east of England. And obviously the battles ensue between Alfred the Wessex and Mercia, you know, and all this, but eventually, you know, peace uh, won through and uh, King Alfred pretty much united England at the time for a while. And he was called uh, Alfred the Great, born in Wantage, where I am today. Nobody really knows exactly 
his birthplace, but it is in and around here. That's something which I've been struggling with for a while now to try and find out his actual birthplace, something which I could then go and document uh, in my little videos to bring you this information. So for those of you who like this kind of thing, I hope that you're getting something out of it, but the history within England or Britain itself is, is just incredible. There's so much of it. It goes uh, way, way back as well. So here's some of the things which uh, I guess they would have, um, replicas I'd have thought, they would have done their different bits of pottery, they would have made all that and bits of leather they would have worked with, you know, to make clothes like that there. So there's your kind of your clothes, your typical kind of clothes they would have worn way back then I suppose, over here as well. Obviously uh, lots of farming used to go on around this area, something there very typical I suppose. Um, perhaps a lady would wear, perhaps. Um, very much into arts and crafts, obviously, you know, you couldn't pop down to Primark, could you, or as the Walmart, to go pick yourself up some uh, clothes or whatever. Had to make it all by scratch, so this was a very labor intensive way of life. Um, people back then didn't live for very long. Alfred himself didn't make 50. Why was Alfred so great? Alfred defended Wessex from the Vikings despite overwhelming odds, which was an incredible achievement. His victories and the reorganization of the Anglo-Saxon military meant by the end of his reign, in he had unified much of England. Alfred was, was also a champion of religion and education and saw the importance of learning. He translated important texts from Latin into Anglo-Saxon, an early form of our modern English language, so that more people could read them. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle and Alfred's biography recorded details of his reign and the kind of ruler he was. They describe Alfred as a just and fair ruler, a diplomat and a wise administrator. Because we know so much about him, some claim that Alfred has been credited with everything important in Anglo-Saxon period. The amount of information we have definitely helped give him his title. Nevertheless, because of his achievements, Alfred is the only English king to have been earned the title of the Great, Alfred the Great. So there's some information there on Alfred the Great.